Hey guys, hope you are doing good. I am Roshni and once again welcome back to my channel Circuit Loop. Today's video lecture is all about oscillators. So let's get started. Let's first understand the basic definition of oscillators. So oscillators are defined as the electronic circuits that produce continuous waveform at the output of desired frequency. In simplest terms, oscillators are something that create oscillations that is back and forth movement. In terms of electrical circuit, oscillations are back and forth movement of voltages. And so oscillators are the circuits that produce repetitive back and forth waveform and forms important part of various electrical circuits. Generally while discussing we say that oscillators are generators. But sometimes while discussing these are referred as energy converters. The reason behind calling oscillators energy converter is that the DC input voltage provided at the input is converted into AC power that is in the form of waveform. However, the obtained output waveform possess various shape and frequency and can be either simple or complex in nature. The wave shapes include sine, square, triangular, sawtooth etc. Also, the frequency range of AC signal at the output of the oscillator ranges between few hertz to several gigahertz. Guys, according to the type of signal produced at the output, oscillators are classified into two categories that is sinusoidal and non-sinusoidal oscillators. The sinusoidal oscillators are the ones which produce such an output signal that shows continuous sinusoidal variation with respect to time and the example is sinusoidal waveform. While the oscillators that produce such an output waveform where the signal frequency rise and fall at different level of voltages are known as non-sinusoidal oscillators and are generally represented by sawtooth waveform. Guys, oscillators are known to be amplifier with positive feedback that give rise to an output signal without using input signal. We know that every electronic component has thermal noise present in it and the thermal noise has all frequency components. Thus even in the absence of input voltage, output waveform can be obtained. To understand this, consider the circuit shown here. Here this A represents the gain of the amplifier and beta represents the feedback fraction of this particular feedback network which is shown here. V in is the actually applied input signal and V out represents the output obtained by the processing of the circuit. First we will consider the gain of the circuit. It is known to us that gain of the circuit is the ratio of output voltage to the input voltage. So initially if we does not consider this feedback network and simply consider only the upper half of the circuit then gain of the oscillator without feedback will be written as A is equals to V out upon V in. Hence the output in the absence of feedback can be written as A V in. Now moving further with the consideration of feedback part in the circuit, the gain of the oscillator with feedback will become equal to A of V in minus beta V out is equals to V out. Now you must be thinking what a surprise this equation is. So guys don't worry, let's understand how this equation came. So when feedback network was not present, the input was V in. But when feedback is involved in the circuit, then the input has become V in minus beta V out. Because in this particular case, the output of the circuit is multiplied with the beta factor. And so we have got the feedback voltage as beta V out. And as we can see here that we have a summation over here. So these two value combinedly produces this as input. Let us just recall that feedback in any circuit represents that a part of output is fed back to the input. And this is what we have done here. Now on simplifying this equation we will get A V in minus A beta V out is equals to V out and further we will get A V in is equals to V out of 1 plus A beta. As we know that gain is V out upon V in so writing the equation in the form of gain we will get V out upon V in that is the closed loop gain as A upon 1 plus A beta that is this particular equation. Guys here A beta is the loop gain and 1 plus A beta represents the feedback factor. Let us now check for the various condition for the loop gain that is A beta which is defined under Barkhausen criterion. 
So let's consider the various conditions first. Guys, we have recently discussed that value of V0 is equals to A into VI in case of no feedback condition. But if we consider the feedback voltage, then we write it as VF is equals to beta into V0. This V0 represents a part of output signal and beta is the feedback fraction. So on substituting the value of this V0 in this particular equation, we will get Vf is equals to A beta into Vi. Let's now consider the first condition where A beta is less than 1. So suppose we have considered A beta is equals to 0.5. For input voltage value, Vi is equals to 3 volts. Then in this particular condition, Vf will become 1.5 volts. This means that each time after the product of A beta into input voltage, we will get a lower value of feedback voltage. Due to this reason, the amplitude of the signal will also get reduced and after a particular point of time, the oscillation will die out. In the next condition where A beta that is the loop gain is greater than 1, let's see what happens. So suppose if we consider A beta as 2, and the input value of voltage is 3 volts. So in this particular case, the feedback voltage will become 6 volts, which was earlier 1.5 volts. And so we can see that the value has increased. Resultantly, the amplitude of the oscillation will also show increase. This both the cases are not providing sustained oscillations. As in the first case, we are having decrease in value. And in the second case, we are having increased values. Now we consider A beta is equals to 1, then in this particular case, Vf will become equals to Vi, that is the input supply voltage. In this condition, the feedback and the input signal will get equalized in the same phase condition and so in this case, the obtained signal will be continuous in nature and hence sinusoidal output will obtained. One thing is to be kept in mind that for oscillations to build up, the loop gain must be greater than 1, but after a certain voltage, the loop gain become equal to 1. And this is due to the non-linear behavior of the feedback amplifier circuit. Thus, there are two conditions for sustained oscillations. The first one is, the open loop gain must be slightly more or equal to 1. And the second one is, the phase difference must be equal to 0, so that the output will be in phase with the applied input. This is Barkhausen criteria. Now let us check the significance of oscillatory circuit. This figure shown here is the tank circuit of oscillator consisting an inductor, capacitor along with a switch and battery. In the open condition of the switch like the one shown here, no flow of current takes place through any part of the circuit because the circuit is incomplete. Now let's check what happens when switch is closed. Suppose this is position A and this is position B. Once the switch is moved to position A, like shown here, this particular part of circuit gets completed and due to the supply input, current begins to flow through the circuit in this way. Due to the flowing current, capacitor begins to store the charge in the form of electrostatic field and once the capacitor gets completely charged up to the DC supply voltage, the position of this switch gets changed from A to position B. This is clearly shown over here. Now, this particular part of the circuit comes into action. Due to the parallel combination of inductor and capacitor, the capacitor begins to discharge through this inductor. As the voltage across the capacitor decreases, the current across this inductor will increase. This changing current will set up magnetic field across the coil which is shown here. And once capacitor gets completely discharged, its energy will get stored across this coil in the form of electromagnetic field. As we can clearly see that in this particular part of the circuit, no external potential exists. So current begins to fall and back EMF will get produced that allows current to flow. This flow of current through this particular part of circuit charges the capacitor C again because of the induced current. And this capacitor gets charged till the time current is reduced to zero an electromagnetic field gets collapsed completely. Guys, after getting fully charged, capacitor again begins to discharge through the inductor and in this way the process continues. 
with back and forth movement of energy between capacitor and inductor the voltage polarity changes giving rise to ac type sinusoidal waveform well friends this is all about oscillators i hope you enjoyed this session so do like share and comment also don't forget to subscribe our channel for further updates i'll be back soon with a new topic till then take good care of yourself bye bye